never miss another fabulous cultural event in Cotacachi just because you can't speak Spanish. In other words, tells you everything you need to know about life in Cotacachi. And here is our host, Deborah May. The only English language program on public radio in Cotacachi. Now, you may be wondering why you're listening to an English language radio program here in the northern Andes of Ecuador, so let me share with you the mission of In Other Words. The goal of the program is to help facilitate the social and cultural integration of English-speaking foreign residents with native Spanish-speaking and Quechua-speaking residents. And we do this by providing multicultural information and lessons in the primary languages of Cotacachi, which, of course, are Quechua and Castellano. Every Friday afternoon at 4, you'll find out what special events are going on next week in the Cotacachi area. I'm your host, Deborah May. Today, Katia Estrella is going to teach us more words in Spanish, and Apak Perugachi is going to teach us some basic phrases in Quechua, like, excuse me, thank you, please take a seat, words you want to remember to use with your Quechua friends and neighbors. Later in the show, I'll be interviewing Suzanne Bennett and Jaime Teran from Hatari, a self-help collective initiated by local Ecuadorian community members in the San Juan Barrio of Otavalo. Just last year, Hatari did search and rescue work at the Mocoa, Colombia mudslide disaster. They ran training programs in motorbike safety. They conducted courses in rescue training for the Otavalan police force and organized four medical brigades in and around Otavalo. So please stay tuned. Enjoy the show. Find out about the local events in Cotacachi before they happen on What's Going On. My regular listeners know it's time to grab a pen and some paper, and you're going to want to jot down some information you're about to hear. Uh, first of all, the uh, Municipio of Cotacachi is inviting everyone from Imbabura to be part of the largest and most important world bird watch on Global Big Day, May 5th. That is what it's called, Global Big Day. Contact the Imbabura Birders Group on Facebook if you are interested in joining a special event for bird watchers tomorrow. It's an event that takes place in more than 160 countries around the world and that unites more than 20,000 people who love birds. And the purpose is to measure the state of the populations of the birds and promote their conservation worldwide. Spaces will be open for this event at the Prefecture of Imbabura and Cotacachi Cayapas Ecological Reserve. For more information in English, you want to contact Beth Mangia, she's a Cotacachi expat, or go to the Facebook group page, Imbabura Birders, B-I-R-D-E-R-S, Imbabura Birders. Also Saturday, tomorrow at 2 p.m., is a special event at Amicine, a rare screening of King Hu's magnificent chivalry adventure epic called A Touch of Zen. In 14th century China, a fugitive noblewoman receives help from an unlikely source when a scholarly artist comes to her aid. A $5 donation is requested for the work of Ami Fundacion. Also tomorrow, the indigenous community of Santa Barbara is having a fair featuring traditional Quechua food and craft from noon until 10 at night at their Casa Comunal, all are welcome to attend their Feria de Comidas Ancestrales y Artesanías. If you love watching dance groups perform, remember there will be another huge dance competition for local Quechua dance groups. It's called Alpa Mamma Tushui 2018. In English, that's Mother Earth Dance 2018. The competitions will be held in San Juan de Iluman, on May 13th from 10 to 5. So last week I went there. There were about 20 different Quechua dance groups, and all of them were dressed in beautiful costumes. They performed powerful interpretive and traditional dance routines and told the stories of Quechua lives, modern and past, through dance. 
So how easy would it be to attend the second free competition on May 13th? Just take a taxi to the Coliseum in San Juan de Iluman. So the Coliseum really is just a modest building with bleachers. Please get there before 10.30 because you'll find a good seat. If you arrive after 11, it may be standing room only. Inexpensive food is served all day in the nearby park, and it's a really good idea, if you can, to prearrange taxi transportation for your return to Kotakachi with a Kotakachi taxista, because Iluman does not have many taxis available, and getting back is harder than getting there, but it's well worth the trip. So Mary Grover just told me she's going to be running uh, the rummage uh, sale store for A Place of Hope on Thursday mornings. And she would like any donations that you have. Of course, it all goes to help the people at A Place of Hope. Her contact information is elmocat123 at gmail.com. That's E-L-M-O-C-A-T-123 at gmail.com. Elmocat123 at gmail.com. Let's help out Mary to help out A Place of Hope. So people have been asking me about when Indie Rimey is happening this year in Kotakachi. <laughs> so I will share what I have learned so far with anyone who's interested. Indie Rimey festivities can start in late May in some of the Quechua communities of Kotakachi, but by June, every Friday night means that small groups of men will be dancing house to house within their own communities. And they usually won't leave each house until their neighbors give the good-natured guys some chicha or aswa to slake their thirst. Now, the beautiful and haunting sound of their flutes and conch shells can be heard throughout the communities throughout the month of June. The Quechua children, the Wabakuna, they are the first to celebrate outside their communities, and that's on Saturday, June 23rd, when they dance in Matriz Square. But the festivities really take off in earnest on Sunday, June 24th, Hatun Punja. That's when the Quechua men, the Karikuna, will first dance into Kotakachi from their communities. They sometimes occupy the entire width of a street, including the sidewalk, so be ready to step aside if you see them coming. Their intent is to take over Matri Square, along with the other groups of Quechua men who will join them from the other Kotakachi communities. The men later will dance back to their communities only to return to Matrice Park the next day, Monday, June 25th. Then they go home, rest for three days, and on Friday, June 29th, the men will return again to take the square until Saturday night. Finally, on July 1st, the women, the Wormikuna, will dance in the park on July 1st. Uh, that's the last day of Indiraimi festivities in Kotakachi for 2018. The most family-friendly days are June 23rd and July 1st, when the children or women will be dancing. Please note, Indy Rimey celebrations happen on different days in different cities. The community of Morochos invites everyone to attend their 80th anniversary celebration on Saturday, May 12th, beginning at 6 o'clock. The celebration features music and dance. It's scheduled for 6, probably will start closer to 7 in the evening, and if you want to go to Morochos or any of the communities, but you're not sure where it is, you can send me a message on Facebook, the group, in other words, with your email address. I'll be happy to send you a map of Kotakachi with all the surrounding indigenous communities on it. There aren't too many of those maps around. Okay, so Kotakachi Arimai is a new organization. They're looking for an expat who can teach young Quechua adults English words and phrases related to community, uh, I'm sorry, to communication, technology, or to tourism. If you are interested in volunteering a total of just four hours, that's all they're asking for, four hours, to help teach English in any of these areas, please message me on the Kotakachi Volunteer Center Facebook group page. Thank you. <laughs> Here is our number, 2915-146. In other words, give us a call. So you'll feel right at home at La Quadra Hostel and Cafe, enjoying their relaxed and comfortable family atmosphere. The hotel is located in the center of Cotacachi on Modesto, Penherrera, just half a block from a trees park. To make reservations, please call, please call 06 
And now it's time to learn a few words in Quechua. Mama Urku and Apak Berugachi speak Quechua. Welcome to Kichwapi, where English speakers will learn some words in Quechua that we can share with our friends and neighbors. Today we're going to be talking about basic phrases that most English speakers, especially expats in Kotakachi, would like to know when they interact um, with our friends and neighbors who are Quechua. Okay, so let's start with uh, the most simple word, thank you, and uh, it can be... Pr- Said in two ways. First, you pay chani. And second, bye. Okay, so to say thank you is as simple as remembering apple pie, blueberry pie, peach pie. Uh, it's pronounced just the same way that we pronounced pie. Um, can you say it one more time, Apak? Bye. Okay, I used to think that if we said you pai chani instead of pai, that we were saying thank you very much in a more formal manner, but that's not true. Both of them simply mean thank you. So pai is perfectly acceptable. Okay, and I know a lot of um, expats who live here in Kotakachi want to behave with great courtesy, and if they bump into someone or make an error, they want to apologize to say excuse me or pardon me. And there is a word in Quechua where you can express that, and it is? Kishpichiwai. Okay, now that's a little long for most English speakers, so let's say that again really slowly. Kishpichiwai. 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 And that's simply a way of saying, excuse me, pardon me, I'm sorry. Kishpichiwai. Kishpichiwai. Okay, if we find ourselves in a situation where we need help, it's nice to know the Quechua word to ask for that help, and that word is? Yanapawai. Again, please? Yanapai. Yanapai. Yanapai or Yanapawai? Both are correct. Correct. Okay. Uh, yanapai and Yanapawai. Okay, very good. Um, when someone comes to your door and you want to invite them into your house, you would say? Shamupai. Okay, so please come in. Shamupai. Shamupai. Okay, shamupai. Okay, some very simple words for yes and no. To say yes, we say. Ari. And to say no, we can say. Mana na. Okay, so we have a choice. We can say mana or we can say na. They both mean no. So yes is. Ari. And no is. Mana na. Okay. Let's just tell a group of folks that we want to get going. Let's go. How do we say that, Apak? Haku. 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 Okay. If we want to ask how much something is, like in the store, um, we could ask. Mashna takan. Mashna takan. Mashna takan. Mashna takan. And uh, an abbreviated version of this, very short, would be? Mashna. Mashna. So to say mashna is sort of like saying um, cuanto, cuanto in Espanol. It's pretty much asking how much. Okay, if we want to express how beautiful a person is, a uh, really nice way of saying that is? Ananay. Ananay. So this is used for people, not for objects. Can you say that one more time, Apak? Ananai. Ananai. I like that. To say something is very good, or just to say how nice, uh, very good, we would say. Alipacha. And to bring that up a notch, to say how wonderful, how marvelous something is, we would say. Sumakpacha. So if something is really nice, we would say. Alipacha. But if it's more than nice, we say. Sumakpacha. Sumakpacha. Okay. And to tell people that I am learning Quechua, Nyukaka Quechua Shimita Yacha Huhuni. Aha, and that is a lot of words to say, but actually, after taking Quechua lessons for almost a year, it's possible for me to say, Nyukaka Quechua Shimita Yacha Huhuni. And uh, someday you will too if you keep listening in to Quechuapi. Thank you, Apak. 
want to remind listeners, you can practice everything you just learned. You can hear the pronunciation. You can learn the definitions again by going to the Facebook group page, In Other Words, or our program page on Radio Publica Cotacachi. So Apak and I will return next week for more Kichwapi. See you next Friday. You Chani. Kaya Kama. Kaya Kama. So um, after you listen to Apak's Kichwa lesson each week on the radio, don't forget you can study and practice the new words you just learned on the free online study tool Quizlet where there's correct pronunciation, correct definition. You don't have to register or join the class to use this free online study tool, Quizlet. If you speak some Spanish and you want to learn Quechua, APAC offers Quechua classes and private tutoring here in Cotacachi. You can contact him at apacperugachi at gmail.com. And now here's a song from 1970 by David Crosby. Stephen Stills, Graham Nash, and Neil Young. Did you know that Jerry Garcia plays the pedal steel guitar on this recording? Or did you know that Graham Nash wrote this song back when he was still a member of the Hollies? Must have a code that she can live by, and so become yourself. Because the past is just a goodbye. Teach your children well, their father's hell. It slowly go by and feed them on your dreams. The one they fix, the one you'll know by. Don't you ever ask them why? If they told you, you would cry. So just look at them and sigh. Them with your They seek the truth Before they can die Teach Your parents well Their children's hell Will slowly go by And feed Them on your dreams The one they pick one you know by Don't you ever ask them why If they told you you would cry So just look at them and sigh And know they love you Check out our Facebook group page for, in other words, with links to all our teachers, guests, and sponsors. So that was Crosby, Stills, Nash & Young uh, from 1970, one of my favorite songs all time from when I was a teenager and related to that song as a teenager and later as a parent with a teenager and now as a grandparent with teenage grandchildren. So the meaning changes over the years. 
I just stopped to visit my friend Yannick Pak at Pandela. Uh, Yannick is going to be our guest on something to talk about next Friday at 4, so please be sure to tune in. And Yannick says, uh, come on down to Pandela because we have delicious, whole grain, healthy sourdough, natural, seeded, creative, tasty, handmade breads. You can find Pandela Kotakachi on Facebook or call them at 099 099- Three six eight two three one four Pandela because life is better while eating. Get to know your neighbors with total Spanish immersion. Vamos. So we have back in the studio uh, Katy Estrella. Estrella means star from the Pucaras. Spanish school located in Cotacachi near San Francisco Square. And Katy has been teaching us Spanish. And this week we're going to... What are we learning this week, Katy? Esta semana vamos a aprender presentaciones, pero también vamos a aprender expresiones como nice to meet you. Okay, so when we are uh, meeting someone for the first time, what what do we say? What's the proper thing to say? So when you first meet someone... Tenemos dos expresiones, mucho gusto y encantado para hombres, encantada para mujer. Whoa, okay, so this is a little more complicated. The easiest thing to do then would be to say mucho gusto, sí. because that would be the same for men or for women. Mm-hmm. Mucho gusto, which means uh, much pleasure in Spanish. Sí, exacto. That's okay, much traducción. pleasure. Mm-hmm. Can you pronounce uh, that phrase one more time for our listeners? Entonces... Mucho gusto. Mucho gusto, Débora. Okay, so I've just met Katy, and Katy is telling me, Mucho gusto, Débora. Exacto. Mm-hmm. Y la otra palabra, como yo soy una mujer, yo digo, encantada. Aha, uh-huh. so I've just met someone new, and I am a woman. So what I would say to this new person is, encantada. Voy a repetir, encantada, encantada, encantada. Okay, so I'm... I'm pleased to meet you. I'm enchanted. I'm charmed. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Si es un hombre, encantado. Encantado. Ah, so if you are a man, if I was a man, mm-hmm. if I am a man. Exactly. Uh, okay, my name's Tom, right? <laughs> so, Tom, uh, I am saying to you, uh, encantado. Exacto. Encantado. Encantado. So not encantada, no. but encantado. Encantado. And again, enchanted. Please, really pleased to meet you. Y otra cosa que quiero enseñarte es... Si estás con un amigo y quieres presentar a otro amigo, dices, te presento a. Ah, so when you're presenting a friend to another friend, you say, te presenta. Presento. Presento. Te presento a Miguel. Ah, te presento a Miguel. So I am presenting to you Miguel. Exacto. Ajá. Repito, te presento a Miguel. Te presento a Débora. Te presento a Débora. Ajá. So, um, I present to you, my friend. Uh Uh O podemos usar la la frase informal es te presento. La frase formal es le presento. Le presento a mi esposo. Ah, so if it's someone who's... um, um, a little... Well, you've got a situation that's more formal. Uh You would say le... Presento a Miguel. Uh-huh. Or le, le presento a Miguel. Ajá. En este caso, podemos usar le presento a mi esposo, le presento a mi esposa. Katy, le presento a mi esposo. Ajá. Uh-huh. So, Kathy, uh, I present to you my husband. Exactly. Okay. And Kathy, being my teacher and me being a mere student, I'm going to use the le form rather than the te. Is that Exacto. correct? Exacto. Te Informal, le formal. Te presento a, le presento a. Repito, te presento a, le presento a. So the te is for an informal situation with friends. Le presento, le, you are in a more formal situation. Y recuerda las respuestas, Débora. Remember the answer. Mucho gusto, encantado o encantada. 
Okay, so mucho gusto. Pleased to meet you. <laughs> Pleased to meet you. And uh, encantado would be coming from a man who is saying, I am pleased to meet you. Encantado would be coming from a woman who would be saying, I'm pleased to meet you. The masculine and feminine is very important in the Spanish language, and that's one of the few things that makes Spanish a little more difficult than English, uh, remembering what's a masculine word, what's a feminine word, whether to use the a or the o. Yeah. Exacto. So, es yeah. difícil porque mm -hmm. en inglés mm -hmm. no hay muchas diferencias. Right. ¿no? right. Ahora, vamos a recordar la lección pasada. ¿Recuerdas los saludos? Buenos días, buenas tardes, buenas noches. So, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening or good night. Hola, adiós. Hola is hello. Adios is bye, and I probably won't be seeing you for a while. Ciao. Ciao is a, a nice uh, short goodbye, uh, see you soon kind of thing. Sí. Mm -hmm. Hasta pronto, hasta luego. Okay, so hasta pronto and hasta luego are pretty much the same thing, and it means I'll see you soon. Y hasta mañana. Hasta mañana. I will see you tomorrow. Terrific. So we've learned so much again today from you. Okay. Uh, so thank you so much, and we'll see you again next week, Katy. Con mucho gusto. Hasta mañana, Débora. Hasta mañana. <laughs> Katy Estrella is an experienced Spanish teacher with over 20 years of teaching experience in Europe and Ecuador. In Switzerland, she first learned how to host guests and have conversations in several languages, skills she now utilizes at her popular Pucara Spanish School just outside Otavalo, a lovely bed and breakfast inn for her Spanish students seeking a full immersion experience. She teaches Spanish to people of all ages and at every level from beginner to advanced and offers Spanish lessons in her classroom at San Francisco Square in Cotacachi, Ecuador. You can find links to all of our teachers, interview guests, and sponsors on our Facebook group page. In other words, one of these sponsors is Prana, Prana Vital Energy, offering local organic produce, nuts, oils, wine, books, and much more. They're located on the corner of Nueve de Octubre and Roca Fuerte. Prana invites you to browse their shops on Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays. Please let Xavier know that you heard about Prana on our program. So... You are listening to In Other Words. We're going to take a break for a few minutes, but we'll be right back with Suzanne Bennett and Jaime Teran from the organization Hatari. So stay tuned. And we're back with Deborah May on In Other Words. Listen to the special people who define Kodakachi here in Something to Talk About. Okay, so a very warm welcome to Suzanne Bennett and Jaime Teran from the self help organization Hatari. Translating for them is, today is Mario Janssens. Hatari is a participating group in the Kotakachi Volunteer Center, Makipurai. It is a self-help collective located in the San Juan Barrio of Otavalo that meets needs identified by the community. Hatari projects last year included search and rescue work, training programs in motorbike safety, medical brigades, Christmas gifts for 400 children, immediate help in emergency situations, an event promoting dog training and welfare, guided mountain walks for blind people, and they also have a two-hour community uh, radio program. Uh, so very interesting work. Uh, Suzanne lives here in Kotakachi as an expat, and I'm going to begin with her. Suzanne, how did you first get involved with Hatari? It basically stemmed from... Initially, being here in Ecuador when the earthquake happened and going out with a search and rescue team called Topos from Otavalo to help in the earthquake. That was back in April in, 2000. That was in April 2016. A couple of years back. Uh -huh. And from there, I met Jaime and other people in Otavalo um, who, who you know, are motivated to do this kind of humanitarian work and 
um, in time that that uh, led to becoming involved in the Hatari Collective, which started in 2017 in Otavalo. Okay, well, that's a pretty dramatic beginning for <laughs> an earthquake. Uh, yeah, that's excellent work. So, um, Jaime, uh, how did Hatari first get started? What was happening that made people think this kind of organization could make a difference? Um, ¿Cómo entonces empezaste con uh, Hatari y cómo, um, cómo influenciaste? Um, ¿Cómo puede uh, ayudar o hacer una diferencia a tu organización? Bueno, gracias. Hatari empezó. Yo soy coordinador general de Hatari. Mi nombre es Jaime Terán y esto empezó con una pasión y amor por ayudar a, a las organizaciones sociales, a la comunidad en sí. So, Jaime es el uh, uh, general coordinator de uh, Hatari. Um, Jaime Terán es uh, su nombre. Yes, so what was happening that made people think that an organization like Hatari could make a difference when you first got started? Um, entonces, empieza, um, pregunta la, la Débora, ¿qué, um, ¿qué hizo para hacer la diferencia Hatari? I'm not sure, so I'm asking um, what was happening that there was a need for ah. a new organization that Hatari got started? Entonces, ¿qué fue la, la situación o qué fue um, lo que... Lo que necesitaba esta iniciativa, esta nueva iniciativa de, de um, fundar esta, esta organización. Bueno, yo trabajé más de 23 años en, en el Army y conocer mucha la organización de necesidades de la comunidad. Entonces, eso me motivó para ayudar. So, uh, Jaime said that he worked for uh, 23 years already in, uh, in Army, which um, helps uh, communities all, all over uh, um, in Imbabura, I, I can imagine. Okay, so um, I understand that you've done some search and rescue work, including going to the Makoa mudslide disaster in Colombia in April 2017, helping with the retrieval of bodies and providing immediate supplies and aid. Um, en, escuchó la, la Débora que si escuchaste, uh, que ayudaste en Colombia cuando pasó una, un desastre, tal vez puedas uh, um, contarnos algo de eso. Sí, como Hatari, el, en abril del 2017 hubo un deslave en Mocoa, Colombia, eh, y acudir un grupo de aquí, de Ecuador, como Hatari, a ayudar en tareas de ayuda humanitaria. So when the uh, mudslide happened in 2017 in Colombia, that's when uh, Atari actually took the initiative to go there and, uh, and help uh, the victims of the disaster. All right, so please tell us a little more about that. Por favor, cuéntenos más de, de eso. Sí, pues reuní un poco de dinero, conseguimos víveres de otros chicos que ayudaron a conseguir eh, ropa, comida, agua, y viajamos hasta Colombia 15 horas y trabajamos una semana ahí, eh, en algunos casos haciendo la recuperación de cadáveres. Okay. Um, so first of all, he, um, he tried to get some, uh, some money together, uh, he did some fundraising and also looked for people to, to help him in this uh, initiative. Uh, also bringing together a lot of stuff that he couldn't bring with him or take with him, like clothes and food. And then they uh, they took the 15-hour the trip to uh, the, um, the disaster area. And then they spent basically a lot of time um, retrieving bodies from uh, from the dirt. So grim but necessary work. Thank you so much for that service. I understand you also do events uh, promoting dog training and the welfare of dogs. Um, entendió también la Débora que estás organizando um, eventos para entrenar perros o trabajar con perros en general. Sí, existe un proyecto en donde queremos organizar con perros que en la calle o cualquier otro perro no necesariamente de raza y poder enseñar a cuidar eh, a las personas que todo perro puede aprender. So Jaime is also working with an initiative that helps to, um, uh, or has as an, its objective to uh, turn street dogs into um, well, well-raised dogs, uh, well-educated dogs. Uh, they don't have to be um, uh, full-raised dogs or whatever, or full-breed dogs. Um, any dog will do, and, uh, and he just uh, helps people, um, well, train their dogs. Uh, that, that's great. Um, so, um, mm, I'm trying to think. So what made you feel that it would be important to provide this kind of education to the local people? Um, ¿Por qué te, te pareció um, que, que sería importante, que fuera importante um, 
uh, ofrecer este servicio a, a personas en Cotacachi? Porque pienso que... La, Otavalo, perdón. En el caso de los canes, que es la, la fauna animal, es necesario la reproducción, implica problemas. Y si podemos enseñar a cuidar estos animales y que adquieran estos animales, es muy importante para cuidar estos animales que no estén en la calle más. So Jaime says that, um, well, obviously we're all aware of the problem with street dogs here and he thinks it's very, very important that we take care of them in a way that uh, we kind of control the way they, um, they reproduce and, um, and also to, um, to work on the relationship that people have with dogs, which um, not always is, is a good relationship here. So that's basically his objective. Um, I'm sure a lot of listeners uh, will certainly support that effort. So thank you again. Um, Suzanne, can you tell me a little bit about the guided mountain walks for blind people? That sounds very interesting. Yeah, it is. I went on one yesterday. It was a lot of fun. <laughs> um, how does it work? How does it work? It works basically. Um, the objective is to uh, go into a mountain area with blind people having uh, with also with sighted people to work as guides so that basically blind people who probably don't get many opportunities to go out into nature and to sort of climb up to you know higher elevations can actually experience being in nature and experience the kind of the feelings the sense of being actually out you know walking the earth having the wind go through their hair etc just getting get, getting into different landscapes so not only that, but also being together. The, 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 the important thing also in Hatari is we are a group together. We're all human beings. We're coming from different places, but we can all work together and enjoy time together. So very much it's kind of the two. It's being out in nature, but also being in the group and interacting. And yeah, it was a lot of fun yesterday. It was. Okay. <laughs> that, again, wonderful work. Um, and uh, is that something you might want to use volunteers for, to be um, guides for the blind folks, or is that yeah, so yeah. it's a possibility? It's an ongoing project. I mean, <laughs> and, the, and we're thinking of, of doing, doing more, ha having more opportunities and, and doing more of these events. And, and yes, it would be great, actually, to have one where some more gringos come along and or gringo or, or, or expats, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> And yeah, it, that would be good. Um, you know, it's, it's ongoing, so we're, we're right. planning more. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah, gringos is the word that Ecuadorians use for anyone from outside of Ecuador, so it uh, doesn't have the same connotation that it does uh, back in the States anyways. Um, also, you've organized medical brigades in and around Otavalo, providing a large number of people in poor communities with free medical consultations. Can you tell us a little about that work? Yes, um, yes, I've been at a few of those. Um, they're, they're usually, I, I've done other medical brigades with other, other groups, uh, but I've been at two of the Hatari events that have been in, in and around Otavalo. Um, they, they're usually large events where a big team of people, of medics and nurses and other people come from usually the, U, the United States and provide um, free care on, on a large scale for people in the local area that really can't access that kind of health care. Um, they're, they're, they're great events, events to be at. Uh, there may be a team of maybe 50 people that come 50? down. So, you know, they're, they're wow. large events and they take a lot of organization. Mm -hmm. They also take a lot of money and a lot of time and loads of coordination and energy to put on. So, you know, uh, Jaime's been sort of um, the principal person initiating much of this activity and, and all power to him because they're, they're not easy things to put on. Um, yeah. And I'm just going to sing Suzanne's praises for a moment. She won't like this, but I'm going to do it <laughs> anyways. She also yesterday served in the dental brigade out in uh, La Calera. Wednesday. She gave some Wednesday. help there. I'm sorry, on Wednesday. Wednesday. And she also uh, has a major role in the clinic uh, for a place of hope for the elderly Quechua. So Suzanne is a very active Kotakachi volunteer. Um, Jaime, I want to ask you about the um, training programs in motorbike safety, uh, action in event of earthquakes, and uh, courses in rescue training for the Otavalan police force. Yeah, uh, entonces también organizas um, um, capacitaciones para personas que usan motos. Um, sí, entendí eso. 
de seguridad de, de sí no son, son cursos de, de capacitación en rescate vertical y cruzar eh, pacientes en ríos pero eso no tiene nada que ver con motos sí eh, con motos hicimos un un evento para recaudar dinero y hacer ayudas de Navidad a una comunidad. Oh, yeah, well, they just organized an event with motorcyclists um, just to uh, raise uh, money, basically. But um, what um, Jaime does work with is, is to show people how to do search, search and rescue parties, for example, and, uh, and help people who are in trouble uh, in any kind of situation, whether they're hanging from the, the side of a hill or uh, whether they're stuck somewhere deep in the earth. Have a translator to make sure that this information <laughs> is correct. Thank you, Mario. So, but you do do trainings for the Otavalan uh, police force in rescue trainings or that kind of work. También organizas entonces capacitaciones para la, la policía o para el cuerpo de policía sí. en Otavalo. Eh, Puedo dar capacitaciones en seguridad y riesgos. Eh, yo soy ex militar y también soy magíster cuarto nivel en seguridad y riesgos. Por mm -hmm. eso puedo capacitar. Okay, can you, oh, I'm sorry. So, uh, yeah, Jaime uh, apparently has quite a lot of experience with uh, search and rescue in all kinds of um, uh, risk-involving uh, environments, and he, uh, he is entitled and has the credits to show it um, to, um, to teach people how to do it. Okay, wonderful. Um, uh, Jaime, I understand you. there's also a two-hour program on community radio that gives information about community events, health advice, interviews, etc. And we'd like to hear a lot about that community radio program. Entonces, Jaime, si por favor puedes hablar un poquito de tu programa de dos horas que tienes en la radio también, donde uh, uh, provees también mucha información para familias um, con el tema de salud o otros temas también. El programa se llama Hatari Nuestra Voz. Es para el servicio a la comunidad en donde hay varios profesionales, médicos, abogados, ingenieros en seguridad, políticos, eh, la persona que vende salchipapas, muy gente muy pobre, eh, todas las personas son bienvenidas y desde la radio ayudamos a la gente con programas diferentes que ellos necesitan. So they offer um, on the radio also a very varied program, uh, which they call Atari Nuestra Voz, which means our voice, basically, our, um, yeah, our voice, um, which offers service to um, the community and to families in general. And they invite, they generally invite um, professional people over for interviews or for, um, for this kind of information, like doctors and politicians even. And, but even people uh, very, very... Um, Um, or simple people from the street who, who sell, uh, I don't know, empanadas or whatever. Um, so everybody's welcome to share their knowledge and help basically the, the community. And when could people hear that program? ¿Cuándo es este programa? Los días sábados de 12 del día a 2 de la tarde. And is there a radio? So it's on the Otavalian radio from 12 to 2 uh, every Saturday. And how would people find that on the radio? ¿Cómo encuentra la gente eso en la radio? Eh, se llama Radio Más 95.5 FM, pero nuestro programa radial es Hatari Nuestra Voz. Hatari Nuestra Voz. So you can find that on the, on the radio, which is called Radio Más, uh, Radio More, Radio Más, which is the Otavalian radio. And um, the, the frequency for that is 95.5. And um, try to look out for that program, which runs on Saturday from 12 to 2, Atari Nuestra Voz. Okay, so we're going to take a break for a few minutes, and we'll be right back with Suzanne Bennett and Jaime Terran from Atari. There she was, just walking down the street singing. Do what did it, did it, done, did it, do. Tapping her fingers and shuffling her feet singing. Do what did it, did it, done, did it, do. She looked good, look good. she looked fine. Look fine, she looked good, she looked fine. And I nearly lost my mind before I knew it. She was walking next to me singing. Do what did it, did it, done, did it, do. Holding my hand just as natural as can be singing. Do I did it, did it, dum, did it, dum. We walk on, walk on to my door. My door. We walk 
under my door Then we kissed a little more Oh, I knew we was falling in love Yes, I did, and so I told her all the things I'd been dreaming of Now we're together nearly every single day Nearly every single day singing Oh, we're so happy And that's how we're gonna stay singing I mean, well, I'm hurt She's mad I'm hurt She's mad Waiting bells are gonna chime We're back with Deborah May on In Other Words. So we're back with Suzanne Bennett, Kotakachi expat, and Jaime Teran from Hatari. And uh, I guess one of the most important things right now is how can our listeners help Hatari uh, with this great work that you're doing in the community? Suzanne, um, do you have some ideas? I, I'm really aware of what good work is being done here. Um, these people are energetic, they're enthusiastic, they have ideas, they can come up with, they know what the communities need and they have the people to do the work. But, but I am concerned that all of these things obviously take resources, uh, they take finance, it, they need money, uh, and that is always, a, 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 you know, that's always something that's a problem and that's sort of an ongoing, it's difficult to sustain the radio program, etc. all these things charge so obviously one of the one of the strongest ways uh the expat community can help is is financially in some ways and also getting involved because you know volunteers people who may be interested in helping and have certain skills to offer um it would be great to know if there are folks out there who, who would be interested and i can come along and say what they can offer we can look at what kind of projects we can develop further with the skills that people uh, people may have here, um, to, to you know, because we're always looking to do more and to extend the area in which Hatari works, and to just kind of um, promote this way of working and uh, as mm -hmm. a collective instead of a self-help uh, initiative. So people certainly can go to the Makipurai uh, dot org um, webpage, or it's easier to find Kotakachi Volunteer Center Facebook group page. Um, you can m make contact with Suzanne or uh, Jaime through that page, or you can call Suzanne directly at zero nine nine seven six four six three four two. Um, I want to help. Uh, I want to ask Jaime. Um, you said you had some ideas about possible projects you might offer for Kotakachi expats. También, también estabas hablando de tal vez ofrecer unas capacitaciones o tal vez sesiones um, más uh, limitadas o algo uh, a los, um, a los, al, al grupo de expats en, uh, en Kotakachi. Sí, es posible capacitar a toda la comunidad de habla inglesa y otros idiomas también en temas de seguridad de acá en temas de riesgos puedo enseñar, capacitarles porque conozco mucho el Ecuador y las amenazas naturales o antrópicas que tiene Ecuador y puedo orientarles para que estén más seguros de esta comunidad So yes, um, Atari is an organization that is very very aware of the situation in Ecuador and also uh, very conscientious of, uh, of what the situation here is and what is possible and what is not and um, what um, what um, Jaime says is that um, he can offer, he can basically offer 
also a, a program for um, about security or any kinds of risks, natural risks or um, natural problems that could happen or other other kinds of problems. And um, that would be uh, could be organized for the expat community, for the English speaking community of Kotekachi. Okay, so we only have a few minutes left. Um, how would you like to? How do you see Hatari in a year from now, five years from now? What kind of future would you like to see for Hatari? Entonces, ¿cómo ves a Hatari como en, en el futuro, en un año o en cinco años? ¿Qué deseas que, que, que pase para, con la organización? Lo que deseo es que se sumen más voluntarios, más personas que puedan ayudar. Que me, da, me he dado cuenta que con pocos recursos que se tiene o casi nada a veces... Hemos atendido a 3,000 personas gratuitamente en salud, han recibido medicina y lentes. Pienso que si la gente se une, serían grandes cosas lo que se puede hacer en el futuro con Hatari. So Hatari is already doing almost the impossible, uh, providing health care to more than 3,000 people completely free. And they're organizing absolutely uh, everything. And as Susan also pointed out, there's a radio program, there's a lot of... Um, um, trainings and, and training programs and everything. So what Hatari really needs is to expand uh, its base of volunteers and also, obviously, in the uh, the financial part, they do need uh, your uh, your support. So if if uh, if you feel like you can help the, these good people uh, from Hatari, it would be very nice if you could uh, help them out financially. Okay, well, thank you so much to Jaime Taran, the coordinator. Uh, what is your title? Eh, Coordinador General Hatari. That's what I said. And, <laughs> and, and Suzanne Bennett and to eh, our translator relation, Mario. International Relationship. <laughs> y, y, um, so thank you very much. And um, I guess if you can help, please go to the Kotakachi Volunteer Center Facebook page. It's the easiest way to get all the information, links, uh, etc. Uh, for this group and our many other wonderful groups on Makipurai. So, a uh, quick m message from our sponsor from Kalua Coffee and Tea. Kalua has great coffee from Intag, but what they do best is sandwiches. Meat with savory toppings, creative vegetarian sandwiches, all served on fresh baguettes. They're on the corner of Pedro Mancayo and Leather Street, seven days a week. Breakfast starts at nine. Tell Andres if you heard about Kalua here on In Other Words. Also, a word from Wolf Puppy. Did you know Wolf Puppy Dog Grooming and Pet Shop of Kotakachi gently bathes and grooms your dog, so he looks great and feels great, too? And at Wolf Puppy, you'll find high-quality pet food and accessories for every kind of pet. Visit them at the corner of Pedro Mancayo near Matriz Park and check out their Facebook page, Wolf Puppy. That's W-O-O-F, Wolf Puppy. Thanks for listening this week to another episode of In Other Words. We'll be back next Friday and every Friday afternoon at 4 with more language lessons and classic oldies sure to bring back good memories from our youth. Do a uh, diddy diddy enough. <laughs> uh, next week, in other words, we'll give listeners something to talk about with Yannick of Pandela. Also in May, I will be interviewing Pierre Etienne Banville, one of the founders of Uno a Uno, and Marco Moreno, who coordinates the thrilling Paseo de Chagra on Sunday, June 3rd, a time when hundreds of horses and riders looking their best will dance for us in local parades. Remember, we begin every program with announcements of upcoming public events in Cotacachi that are not so easy to find because the publicity is in Quechua or in Spanish. I interpret those announcements for you to the best of my ability so you won't miss any special cultural events in Cotacachi. If you want to get in touch with any of our language teachers, guests, or sponsors, you can also go to the Other Words program page on Radio Publica's uh, Kotakachi's website. Many of the events I announced during the What's Going On segment can also be found on our Facebook group page. So thank you for joining me for another episode of In Other Words. We'll talk again next Friday at 4. Hasta viernes. Chasca punja kaman. Thank you. Gracias. Yupaychani mashikuna. Thank you for listening to our program. In other words, we'll see you again next Friday at the same time, 4 p.m. on Radio Publica Cotacachi. Fill my heart with song and let me sing forevermore. You 
Uh-uh.